Yellowstone volcano and how the largest ever recorded magnitude 7.3 earthquake there tore apart the supervolcano. This has to do with the Hebgen Lake earthquake of 1959. And from what the geologists are telling us, these earthquake swarms that we're still having are from that time. This is on Express UK Sebastian Kelly reports from the latest Caldera Chronicles that come out every week. It has to do with their findings on Hebgen Lake. 7.3 magnitude. It struck the supervolcano 60 years ago and it remains the largest earthquake to ever hit the region according to U.S. Geological Survey. It's the so-called Hebgen earthquake and it struck just outside Yellowstone's volcano western border August 17, 1959. Now this is very relative to what's going on today because most of the biggish, biggish intensity earthquakes that we're having are at the northwest corner of Yellowstone Park, which is over the supervolcano, and as well as, of course, just outside of the park, which is in the area of uh, Manhattan, Montana. Yesterday we had a 4.2 earthquake there, and that's not small. The seismographers recorded at that time, August 17, 1959, a magnitude 7.3 event at 11.37 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, around 6.5 miles west-northwest of Yellowstone, Montana. The earthquake was strong, and it triggered devastating landslides in Madison Canyon, Officials at the U.S. Geological Survey estimated the landslide shifted about 50 million cubic yards of mud and rock down towards a Rock Creek camping ground. Tourists were forced to flee, of course, abandoning the area. Landslides also blocked off Madison River, which led to the birth of a lake, and they called it Earthquake Lake. And it was formed by the backing up of the river from the from the, uh, the the water from the river. Now it's the 60th anniversary of that uh, earthquake, the massive earthquake. The USGS officials warn another such earthquake is more likely to happen than a Yellowstone super eruption. In other words, a major earthquake as opposed to a major caldera forming super eruption. Jamie Farrell who is the chief seismologist at the Yellowstone Supervolcano Observatory branch of the USGS, says that, um, he says that the desired event uh, in the weekly USGS Caldera Chronicle said the combination of the landslide, fault scarps, those are the landslides uh, falling down, the uh, tearing of the, of the land and uh, subsiding, fault scarps and damaged highways, trapped many tourists in the canyon that night and uh, in addition he says the sudden northward tilting of the basin caused Hebgen Lake to slosh, slosh back and forth. This is referred to as a sage wave. He says the waves were so large that they breached the Hebgen Lake Dam a few times. People were panicked thinking that the dam would fail but thank goodness it didn't. The waves eventually subsided and died off. It's just like what we saw recently in the Ridgecrest area earthquake in California where people were taking pictures of the water in their swimming pools sloshing away and uh, even the swimming pools sloshed away with the 7.1, the water in their pools. Well, that's what happened to this lake. So luckily the dam did not fail and the waves eventually died off. To date, the Hepkin Lake earthquake remains the largest to strike in the northwest U.S. Intermountain West region. The earthquake blocked off roads, damming Yellowstone's Old Faithful Inn when a large chimney collapsed. The day after the earthquake, many of Yellowstone's hydrothermal features started er erupting very uh, strangely in that things that were basically springs turned into geysers, so they were going haywire with an unusual amount of scorching eruptions which meant that, of course, the hydrology underneath had shifted. According to Professor Farrell, at least 
289 springs in the geyser basin of Firehole River erupted like geysers. Out of the erupting springs, at least 160 had no previous history of eruptions. He said that during the, la the first few days after the earthquake, most springs began to clear, but several years passed before clearing was generally complete. Um, now, we also, uh, at that time, read that the springs had become turbid and that the water was not white and clean that was coming out. It was muddy. It was uh, cakey. It was uh, dark. It was filled with soil and uh, some, some kind of dark substances. I guess it could have been because of the underground, perhaps, sides of the uh, containers of the water reservoirs collapsing into the water and of course uh, creating some kind of a uh, muddy looking water. So this is rec recently what we saw one uh, daybreak a couple of uh, videos ago concerning what we saw in the Old Faithful geyser area, the live webcam showing us steam that was not just white steam, it was also dark or blackish steam. So it could be. It could be that something's going on there as well. We don't know. Now, during the first few days, uh, because what happened was that the camera quickly panned away from what we had uh, seen for a couple of seconds. Now, the geologist here said during the first few days after the quakes, most springs began to clear. Several years passed before the clearing was complete, though. Also, new hot ground developed in some places, and this became more apparent by the following spring with the formation of new fractures in sinter and linear zones of dead or dying trees. Just before the earthquake as well, before the 7.3 earthquake, Sapphire Pool in Biscuit Basin was seen erupting every 17 to 20 minutes at a height of 3 to 6 feet. And after the earthquake, this same Sapphire Pool was shooting water up to heights of 6 to 8 feet. Professor Jamie Farrell said earthquakes happen nearly every day in the region and occasionally the area produces strong earthquakes that are capable of affecting large areas and causing damage. He said we should expect similar effects if another earthquake of this size would happen today, except there are many more people visiting the area today than there were in the summer of 1959. A magnitude 7.3 earthquake is a bigger threat than Yellowstone erupting. According to Michael Poland, he's the chief scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. He said another magnitude 7.3 earthquake is a bigger risk than a super eruption, a caldera forming eruption. And he explained, he said, the biggest concern we have for Yellowstone is not with the volcano, it's with the earthquakes. This is an underappreciated hazard in the Yellowstone area. There can and will be the future magnitude 7 earthquakes. These earthquakes, the geologist said, can happen on a human life scale, meaning they tend to occur every 100 years. This is what Jamie Farrell, USGS, claimed, that they do take place every 100 years. So what is he saying? He's probably saying here, expect it to happen. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation 
with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.